is me, Chris Candido. No gimmicks needed. I think we all know about WWF, WWE contracts. You're, you know, you're an independent contractor that meets practically none of the requirements to for an independent contract. Uh, do you uh, right. do you remember your family and Chris and you discussing the contract itself? And uh, I think uh, I didn't quote it, but it's basically it had a lot of holes. Uh, what were some of the like more unfavorable terms uh, the WWF wanted Chris to sign for? So what I remember basically, so I, I remember my bro coming home. Cook came home with a WWF hat on, WWF gear on, and he I think he had already signed the contract. It was about to sign it. Showed it to my father, who called up um, one of our neighbors as a, a lawyer, and um, the, the lawyer looked at it and was like, "Was like, Chris, you shouldn't, you shouldn't sign this." He's like, "It basically says that you can be terminated at any time for any reason." Like, he's like, "There's so many holes in this contract that you know it wouldn't be wouldn't be wise for you to sign it." And my brother's thinking was, "All I want to do is wrestle. This is the the only game in town, and I want to be there." So he signed it, you know regardless mm. like also i forget if i if i say it in the book or not but um my uncle was a just recently retired a college football coach and i remember him uh you know giving my brother the whole steroids talk about like don't do steroids i remember eavesdropping on that on that uh on that conversation and again he you know he took that with a grain of salt you know he he, he heard him out and said yeah you know you're right but that was you know going around then i'm you know and it's wrestling so i'm sure it's still going on obviously well uh, there's a well well you know with the wellness policy and everything i think and i don't know how much but therapeutic exemptions and stuff like that so god knows how many people are actually on either steroids or uh, uh trt trt yes thank you very much uh, so who knows, basically, uh, only their doctors and the company themselves know who's got exemptions or exemptions. You can, you can work a doctor for TRT. Mm. Like that's, especially if you're a wrestler, are you kidding me? How easy it'd be to work a doctor? <laughs> like, oh man, you know, I feel drowsy all the time. And you know, like it, it, there's, I'm sure a lot of the guys can work doctors for, uh, for the gas. Yeah. Uh, with, um, Chris's uh, initial exposure in the WWF, uh, we all know the character Skip and everything, but uh, it's only really when I read the book that I realized just how immediately unhappy he was with all the suggestions that the WWF were coming up with for his character. Uh, I mean, I'll let you go through it. And we're not just talking about characters, we're talking about costumes as well. Well, I, I think for him, he, uh, you know, he was always just tunnel vision, you know, pro wrestling WWF, that's what I'm going to do. And uh, when they gave him these ideas, he was just like, no, like, I don't want to do that. Like, just let me be myself, you know, like, that's what I want to do. He, he was unhappy, but he was happy at the same time. He was happy to be there. That was like validation for all the hard work he put in. And, you know, he could, he could tell our parents that, you know, look, I'm making a living doing this wrestling that they didn't want him to do. But, um, yeah, as far as gimmicks and costumes, he would have been much more happier if he had more of a hand in the creative part of it. I think he, uh, like they say, tried to make uh, chicken salad out of chicken shit, as they say in the South. But, uh, you know, yeah, he wasn't happy with the gimmick. He obviously. And I, I think, if, yeah, if it, if, it, if it was up to him, he would just be Chris Candido or, you know, something the blonde bomber or Mr. Charisma or one of the, one of his older gimmicks, you know? Yeah. Oh, uh, I know Tammy said it. You say it in the book as well. Um, what was the mighty mouse? I know obviously the cartoon mighty mouse, but they weren't going to give him like ears or anything or, or, or what, 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 what was, how was that character explained to him? I, I'm not sure. I just remember seeing promo pictures of it and he was like standing there with like a freaking cape on. And uh, you know, it, it just, the aesthetics it didn't look good. It looked like they were, you know, like like goofing. It was like a like a goofy gimmick, and that wasn't him because he he'd been wrestling professionally since he was thirteen. He's like, dude, I gotta just like fucking Mighty Mouse, you know. So I think that's where, uh, and like like I, I I'm sure I said this in the book too. They were like, you know, after the body down his run was finished, they were up there, and my brother was helping train the younger guys. Like he he you know he wrestled the rock he was working with the rock and mark henry and you know at the time he's like i have a window of time to be 
a star and make money in this business. And that was when I want to do it. You know, that's when he jumped ship uh, for, for other reasons too. But basically that was, uh, you know, he, in hindsight, he would like, you know, when he was, you know, 30, 31, he was like, dude, I should have just fucking stayed, trained people and shut my fucking mouth. And then when my time came, they'd repackage me or whatever. But at the time it was real hard headed Cause I mean, it's like, you know, he worked his whole life to get to this place and then they put him in a gimmick he wasn't very happy with. So he always made the best of it. He was never an outward complainer. He always like laughed things off, but yeah, he wasn't very happy with it. Hmm. Uh, this is just my personal theory, but um, since reading the book and I'm going to bring up the book many more times, uh, it's right there as well. If you want to buy it, it's on Amazon. And uh, this is just my own theory is because he was complaining so much about, you know, the characters and, you know, having to wear a cape originally and stuff like that. Do you think that's why, at least in the initial run before uh, uh, Tom Pritchard came in, uh, that's why he was booked so low on the card with Barry Horowitz? Do you think that was maybe a sort of, this is what complainers get kind of thing? Yeah, yeah, it could have been. It, it definitely could have been. And he could have not even realized it. You know, they, they, they could that, that could definitely be a possibility. Hmm. You know, so... He, uh, he, he, you know, he, 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 he laughed off the Barry Horowitz stuff. Like he, like he, like I said, he, uh, you know, that's what he was most known for. Like people come up to him in the mall and like <laughs> pat themselves on the back and run away and he'd <laughs> laugh about it. But I know, you know, like that's not where he wanted to be. Obviously he wanted to be because, because talent wise, he knew he, he, he had it all. He, he was talented and there were guys a lot less talented than him that were, that were in higher positions. So I think that's why he kind of bitched and moaned about that kind of stuff, you know, behind the scenes. Yeah.